Locking teams of the nation. It was on display in their penalty kill, and their penalty kill is a beneficiary of it. About half their games this season, they've actually blocked twice as many shots, but nobody blocks that one. A shot and a score as walking it out in front was Hedges, and the freshman buries it for his eighth of the year. Tremendous amount of production from Northeastern's freshman, and it's no surprise that a freshman gives him the first goal of the game. And even though they don't score on their power play, TC, it builds momentum, it gives you confidence, it gives you more rhythm. You carry that over to five on five. Harvard gets lost in coverage. Are we in man on man? Are we in zone? And that allows Hedges to just continue to improve his angle, carry the puck, get to the slot. Nobody closes, nobody takes away time and space. The penalty box, now you got two defensemen in the, in the box if you're hurt. So you test the waters early when the waters are rough today if you're a physical player. So the four on three going on, it's about to become a five on three, and now it is. They patiently keep the puck. 57 seconds to go in the five on three. And on the right side, the shot, the score! Just like that, they waste no time at getting the puck over to Kevin Roy, and he does what he does so well. Two nothing, Northeastern. Absolute phenomenal tournament a year ago. The MVP, even though Northeastern does not win the championship, which speaks volumes of uh, his worth to his team. He has a similar tournament this year. Has an opportunity to just be the third player to win back-to-back -back B-Pod MVPs. Joining Sean Fields and Johnny Cunniff. And what a shot. 1972, Les Chason was the leading scorer two straight years for the Husky there, so. Kevin Roy, last year, as we said, rarefied air by winning the MVP of the Bean Park without winning the tournament. And another score here right off the gate. A terrific rush as taking it all the way up the ice was Matula, and he just laid it in front of the net. And it's a 3 nothing lead. Snyderman crashed the net. And now Harvard is going to be hard-pressed. A team that's had trouble scoring much of the year is down by three. Now again, puck management an issue, not making enough good plays in the neutral zone. It allows Spatula to make that steal right around the red line. And then he just explodes into the offensive zone, protects the puck pretty well. And, you know, every goal doesn't have to be a thing of beauty. It's going to be hard work, bodies to the net, pucks to the net. Alexander was the call. Right. There was no hit after the whistle. And that you could see, or at least understand the call. Tic tac toe and Pim buries it. Braden Pim gets his team leading 16th of the year. And it's a 4 nothing lead for the Huskies. Uh, Northeast an opportunistic. They're creating opportunities, and it's just loose coverage by Harvard. That allows this goal to occur. Again, inside position, this time by Pim to the front of the net. Just plants himself right at the top of the blue paint. Gets in between three Harvard Crimson. Able to take that beautiful pass. The third period begins uh, with Northeastern holding on to a one man advantage, and Pim gains the line off the draw. Trying to make something happen with that power play time. Stevens, left side, plays it up top. Sossaman fires it through, scores! Power play goal and a 5-0 lead for Northeastern. The second straight period they score in the first 30 seconds. Yeah, it looked like Pim may have got a piece of it in that high slot, but it was just a simple wraparound for possession right off the entry to the offensive zone. And Stevens and Waugh to play a little bit of catch and then they work it back to the point. Sosserman able to work his way across the blue line and that quick little wrist shot looked like it changed a little bit of direction, didn't it, TC? It did. I'm not sure if Pim gets a piece of it or not or if this is going to be Sosserman's goal. I think they may give it to Pim. Yeah, Pim and uh, just late intent. Tough to call that on the ice, but you go by what you see, and pretty clear that was a play intended to injure or take a player out of the game. Down the penalty, 16 minutes, 33 seconds. So back to the point, Benning fires it through Pim at the edge. The score for Smatula as he buries it into the empty net. Third power play goal of the game for the Huskies with 3.13 to go. Yeah, pretty basic, too, with this man advantage. Sometimes the best formula for the power play is in its simplicity. Puck 
sticks to the point, shots on goal, looking for second chance opportunities. That quick little release, Benning. He's got Pin going to the net, looking for the redirect. Time now for the Whitman Sampler Chocolate Save of the Game. America's favorite gift for more than 100 years. A terrific save right there for Clay Wynn off Malone. Uh, what an opportunity, uh, even though the, the score is pretty much, or the outcome is pretty much decided. The Huntington Hounds are going to be barking next Monday night in the 62nd Beanpot Championship game. A 6 nothing win over Harvard here tonight. They're hoping it'll be bring back the 80s night next Monday here at TD Garden.